So, uh, welcome back. Uh, we took a little break there and came back, and we had some people asking about email providers. Uh, we've been playing around with different data types and organizing all our knowledge source and got down a YAML rabbit hole. But that's something we'll do later. Um, so right now, the real question is, this is a pretty, pretty fast question. This video shouldn't be very long. Uh, which email provider should you pick? And I'm actually going to change this is the kind of email provider for you. I'm going to put that on the end there. There you go. So because the email provider really, as I've said all the time, depends on your needs, not what someone's going to tell you to do. So anybody tells you to do something, take their advice, listen to what they have to say, make your own opinion and your own you know, research. You're an autodidact, you're the boss of you. You are um, the master of all you survey. Um, so you get to pick, uh, you're the master of you. Um, and it's nice to be the master of you, you know, you can be the boss of one. So which email works best for you? Well, that really depends. And the answer isn't uh, necessarily gonna be Gmail. And we're gonna talk about that. Uh, does any you know it's funny uh the next email anybody would ever even tell me that they use uh usually hotmail people keep telling me hotmail i'm like okay we're gonna we're not gonna evaluate them right now we're just gonna talk about them this doesn't even know what that is uh what's another email provider out there that people come across i actually had a yahoo.com uh come up and so <laughs> here's a funny one AOL.com. I actually have parents who of people that I, yeah, what's Microsoft's called? It's not Hotmail. What is it? Who actually have AOL.com email addresses. I kid you not. C Templar. I don't know what that is. Outlook. Microsoft Outlook. Okay. So is that 360? What is the, is it my Hotmail the now Outlook? Uh, so we should put, should we put Outlook? Yeah, they bought Hotmail and Live.com. Okay, so, all right. So, I mean, let's do this. Let's do Microsoft and put these under Microsoft. So, we have Hotmail. We have Live.com. Uh, is there such thing as an e is an Outlook? I don't know. I don't use it. Outlook? Is there such thing as an Outlook.com? I don't know. Is there such thing? pick the best for you um i'm gonna actually put my favorite on the top here uh outlook.com there is okay so protonmail.com and then another one that's related to protonmail which i would suggest you look at second if you can't do protonmail to the noah i can never spell it to the is evil i know and we're going to talk about to the noah all right uh, that's why when people talk about it, I want you guys to talk about it, uh, you know, kind of openly so we can talk about it. We can do a little bit of a debate here, uh, which I like about my little YouTube slash Twitch thing is I have in a community to discuss things. It's not just me telling you what to do. Um, all right. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Let's do. Uh, I actually want to put that in there. Uh, it's like uh, host your own. And this is a thing. So let's talk about that too. Um, 301 for Outlook, outlook.live.com. Uh, all right. So uh, we're going we're to talk about the pros and cons of each one. We're specifically going to focus on the big ones. And uh, I, we are, I'm not going to lie. We're going to definitely jump to what I prioritize above other things. Uh, but let's, let's make a list of criteria again. I have a feeling that the criteria is going to be a lot like the criteria that we just recently did for web browsers. Uh, and so I'm going to steal that from there. So we did another video like this about, uh, web browsers I'm trying to decide and he's going to look, look that one up. And this one is going to be, so here's a criteria, uh, criteria, a lot of them overlap, no doubt. So let's see which ones don't lap, don't stay. So safety, privacy, uh, okay. Speed. Is that really a thing? Do we care about speed and email? I tell you what I really want. I want a um, uh, good UI user user experience, right? UX, we'll call it UX. Uh, uptime reliability. Oh yes, uptime. 
uh, let's say reliability, reliability. Uh, I think we should put uh, uh, spam, handling spam. Uh, support for SMTP for sure. Uh, okay, so SMTP uh, IMAP, and we'll talk about what those are real quick. Uh, that's just ways of talking to email servers. Um, so that's like, we should probably have uh, uh, integration. And I think we should have API. That's kind of this stuff right here, but kind of separate too. Custom DNS, I, just, I wouldn't have thought of that one. Uh, DNS uh, us usage, okay, let's call that adoption. I think we have that down below here. Adoption, so let's put adoption here. Uh, we have speed, adoption. I don't, speed's not really a thing. How open is it? I People don't really care. Do you care about it being open? I mean, I, I guess we can put that there. Power, not a res resources. How much resources does it use? I, that's more of a client question. So I could probably leave it there. Features, of course, uh, media. Does it support media? Uh, features in relation to price. That's true. Price. Price is a thing. Uh, it's not even a thing in some of those other the browser selection. Um, UX is for is for the MUA, uh, the mail user agent. Yes, um, he's using the awesome terms. It must be a mail engineer. How is this assistant mail engineer or administrator for a big one? We had to do MTA and all that stuff. So you don't need to know the the deep, uh, dark questions about you know that kind of stuff. You can actually just do it. Uh, having mail blacklisted. Oh gosh, yes. Resources, features, price, media. Um, uh let's say uh blacklisting just in general we need to talk about uh blacklists like being blacklisted and uh, boy i was like my full-time job was getting the, the company that i was administering uh off of that and i'll tell a quick little story about that later if you remind me about how i became the corporate mail administrator uh in a little donut meeting uh, i'll just tell it right now uh, because I was the only one who had any mail experience because I was running Linux at home and decided to host my own uh, just as, a, as an, you know, as an experience. And um, it was awesome. Uh, I ran my own DNS, had everything. Uh, it also got me hacked and I caught the hacker and reported him, which is a different story I'll tell another day uh, by using Tripwire. I used, I used the, I wrote my own Tripwire thing to, to detect anybody who said, found him. My point is, is that I learned a lot about email in the process. And so when they asked in the meeting, Hey, does anybody here have any SMTP mail experience? And I was like, yes. And I ended up saying, okay, you're on it. And all of a sudden I was responsible for deblacklisting and it sucked too, because I had to look through mail. I hated it. I had to figure out why we we're getting blacklisted because it would cite the specific reasons. And I had to actually access corporate mail and see, you know, some of the stuff that was there. And I was like, oh my God, what are people sending from their corporate accounts? It's crazy. Don't ever send... <laughs> Not work stuff because you, if for no other reason, you're going to torture some poor email administrator who's going to have to sift through that crap in order to keep it, the whole company from getting blacklisted. Which was my job, okay, for a while. Uh, anyway, so developer integration, eh, maybe scandals. That's not a thing. Um, I mean, I suppose privacy is the question about that. Active, uh, portable, mm, no, it's a service. So customization, is that a thing? I guess that's kind of a UX thing. Put that under the UX thing here, customization. Uh, extensions, I don't want extension for my email. Uh, and can I use it from the terminal? So I'm gonna leave terminal on there because terminal is a criteria for everything I do. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take our criteria here. And I'm going to split the pane again. I could wish this is something I wish I actually could do this faster if I knew Tmux better. I don't. I just know the minimum. I love Tmux, but I don't. I, don't, I haven't mastered it. To the you can, you're always mastering more stuff. Uh, just prepare criteria. Uh, what did I do there? Oh, All right. And uh, CD to read me and tools, no services, email, uh, and we'll go through that. All right. So uh, Gmail, let's talk about Gmail. Um, filtering is probably is probably UX. Uh, I think it's probably the biggest one. Um, now, this is a really interesting thing. 
uh, a lot. I mean, I won't show you the videos. You guys can go watch the videos. Uh, there's a really great Adam Ruins Everything video, which will be listed in the C also on this page eventually, um, about how much Facebook and Google own you. Um, uh, you actually own your email, but you give them a permanent right to search your email. Uh, and that can be really nice. I mean, they can literally help you. Have you ever used Gmail? When's the last time? Last, it was two years ago that I used Gmail. But I remember right before I gave up Google, I was using Gmail and it was completing my paragraphs for me. Now, I'm not kidding. It was so smart about how I was writing. It was completing paragraphs and sentences for me. And so I could write and I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say, tab. So uh, it's still... Well, next word, not paragraphs. Dude, it would almost always get two or three or four words. And and it definitely was learning that, not just from me, from others, but but sometimes it was like really weird how how dead on it had adapted to my writing style. Which in one sense is super cool, and on the other sense is horrible. Another one of these devil edged swords. You can't have you know, you can't have a robotic assistant helping you with everything and knowing your your every you know, sort of like your butler, right? Um, uh, or whatever, your personal assistant. You can't have a one that, that kind of, you know, thinks ahead how you think unless it unless you give it access to your brain. Uh, and the way to give those kinds of things access to your brain uh, is to make everything you've ever done available to them. And there's lots of really great, there's a Black Mirror about this, uh, sci-fi, there's, you know, there's 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 a there's a there's a Voyager about this, there's an Orville about this. There There are so many fictional portrayals of, what happens when you hand over, uh, you know, the aggregate sum total of all your data online to an AI and have it figure you out? And I, I know that seems kind of out of place for a conversation about picking an email provider, but it has something, I think, to do with our priority. Uh, if your priority is ease of use um, and you don't care about privacy uh, and you want to be able to write emails conversationally, you want to be able to you know, dictate your emails, which is, I used to do that a lot, actually. Uh, then go, Gmail makes a lot of sense. Uh, but you're sacrificing a lot to get that. I mean, a lot. It's just so it really depends on your priorities. Um, it, I mean, the ease of use and uh, ability to have an assistant that just, you know, really, really can complete your sentences and, and says, oh, by the way, you forgot about sending an email to this other person. Normally you send an email to this person every time you send an email to this person. I mean, that's the kind of machine learning we're talking about. Stuff that watches your habits so much that it actually starts to, to pick up on you and help you out. In fact, there's some security software that I learned about recently, not recently, last year, um, that is pretty out of the box. What it does, it, you, know how, you know how a credit card will some credit card companies will all of a sudden stop taking credit card payments because you did something out of the normal, right? Like, like out of your usual routine, like all of a sudden you're in Cancun and you're spending money like crazy. Right. And so it says, Oh, sorry, blocked. And you have to actually go tell the credit card company. Well, there's actually a, a security product that I cannot remember right now that actually does that in an enterprise. And what it does is it, it, it monitors everybody's behavior. Uh, as in terms of how much email they send out, uh, whether they're browsing for a particular website at a given time, it monitors everything. And so if somebody does anything that's unusual, it flags it and sends it to the security team. And the truth is, this kind of level of security is going to be required to protect us from the single greatest security threat of any organization. The humans in the organization, they're going to click on the Nigerian prince email. They're going to be trolled through, the, through that weird phone call. They're, they're, they're going to download crap that's going to be sending stuff over, over the internet at, 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 at times when, when, you know, that are not going to be detected, or at least, you know, that the, the hacker doesn't think are going to be detected. Uh, and, and two sides of this. If you're a hacker and you want to break into an institution, the humans are the easiest way to get in. Uh, you know, beginning with Kevin Mitnick and all of his fame, uh, you know, that's how people break in. It's the humans, get them to do something stupid. And we all know they will beginning with passwords called password. Uh, but even worse, clicking on things that they shouldn't be and installing software that they shouldn't have. That is how security violations are happening in massive corporations. And so some <laughs> password for job. So some of these, these, why does this have to do anything with email? Well, we're going to get to there um, because email is probably the primary vector to attack humans in an organization. Uh, if you if you want to get in 
to something, you send email. Uh, and this is why, you know, Hillary's emails were such a thing, even though Trump and everybody after that has vastly violated the personal email account uh, standards for the government. We're not going to get political, but it's just really funny. They all point the finger, but they're all they're all violating a uh, standard, which is there uh, that the, the Security uh, Organization of America, at least, cannot enforce, which is don't use emails that are insecure because they do stupid things. Uh, like click on pictures of this or, or follow this link, whatever. So we're starting to see security uh, solutions that address the humans and say, hey, this this human's not behaving normally. It's he's doing he or she is doing weird things like sending, uh, yeah, go off the grid. You know, where's my where's my flip phone? Uh, you know, so how you know w tracking them? And so let's talk about that because. Privacy and safety, I listed as the top two criteria, and I believe they are the top two criteria. Um, this is your decision about whether convenience or security and privacy are more important. That is up to you. Uh, and you'll hear me rant uh, when I'm not officially on a YouTube video uh, about how how downright stupid it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, people are not stupid, but the ideas are uh, to place, you know, convenience above safety and privacy. I, I, I think that that's the downfall of human civilization uh, is convenient. We trade convenience for safety and privacy all the time uh, in our history. And, and I, it's a big pet peeve of mine. Does that mean that I'm going to judge you if you do it? Maybe if you tell me, but, but it's your decision and, and you're just, if you, if you decide to be able to read and talk into your thing and, and, and have your, you know, your phone, um, autocorrect for you and, 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 and you, you know, know your habits, and thing, whatever. So, uh, if that's the case, Gmail is fine and Gmail hands down, I'm going to put it here. I, I personally feel like Gmail is, first of all, it's the most, whether we like it or not, it's definitely the most ubiquitous, uh, and this is also a very uh, American-centered thing. Do we need to put Yandex or any of that stuff over here, guys? Um, Android phone number for privacy always a question in my mind. We'll we'll talk about phone privacy another day. But but uh, asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I need to know your mother's maiden name. Asking for a friend. <laughs> You're so smart. So yeah. Hmm. So what's the most ubiquitous? Uh, you can have people run mock phishing attacks on your company. Yes, this is all true. And everybody knows on the stream, I'm, I'm particularly uh, security focused. That's that's 37% uh, a year. That's the fastest growing tech career right now. So yes, I, I talk about it a lot. Um, Gmail is definitely the most ubiquitous. Uh, it's the least, uh, the least private of all the options. Uh, I'm also going to put this. I, I believe it's the least secure. Uh, you have no idea how many times I have heard about people having their Gmail accounts hacked. I mean, constantly. Uh, it is it's le le least private. You know, like you give rights, you uh, you release uh, rights to content to Google officially. Uh, at one point, uh, I thought mistakenly that you, they actually owned your email and they were just giving you a right to use it. Uh, it turns out somebody found a a, um, a thing in the in the agreement that says that you own uh, all the content in there, but you give them an in perpetuity, which means forever uh, license to use that knowledge in any way they want. Uh, and that, that's forever. That means even if you delete it off their system, they are not obligated to remove it. Uh, there was a very famous uh, court case, but I don't remember the name of it, um, where Google was taken to task and they were forced uh, to purge historical data that they had on file. And that was related to a search. Uh, not necessarily email. So privacy is a big issue and there is no bigger violator of privacy than Gmail. So uh, according to the TED Talk uh, from, uh, oh, I forget this name, the guy who made ProtonMail, uh, that it, I'm going to actually pull it up to you just because I think it's really relevant. Um, so we're going to YouTube uh, just to give you a sense of it. Um, this, this is, I'm, look, first of all, I want you to know, I, I'm, I, 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 so full disclosure, uh, I am a visionary of ProtonMail. I pay, you know, 50, 60 bucks a month uh, to support them as a company. Uh, and I believe in what they're doing. And so I just want you to know uh, where my money is going. Uh, I want you to understand, though, that I am not paid to promote anything on this YouTube channel, nor will I ever be. Um, that is just my commitment to you. I, I know that there are YouTubers and Twitch people who have signed agreements not to tell you what things that they are influencing 
influencing you to use. And I will never do that. That is so far against my ethical boundaries. Um, so anyway, let me just talk to you about this one. So you're going to hear me, you know, one person actually said shilling, which was very insulting uh, for Proton Mail. Uh, and ProtonMail has problems. Uh, I'm not going to say it doesn't, but, um, and let's see the ProtonMail TED talk, but there's a reason I want to show you this particular video. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. So here's Andy Yen. It's a pretty old video. This is when ProtonMail really came onto the scene. And we're going to even skip this video here uh, from YouTube. I don't have any uh, YouTube blocking going on right now. Um, all right. So let me, let me just block this really quick. There is uh, a line here that I want Andy Yen to, to explain. Uh, and this is kind of talking about ProtonMail as well. These are the top two picks, uh, so therefore, um, yeah, right to forgotten, yes. Since then, the internet has transformed the way we communicate. We yeah, business, that might be. And even the way we live. In many ways, the ideas that gave birth to Google, Facebook, Twitter, and so many others have now really transformed our lives. And this has brought us many real benefits, such as a more connected society. However, there are also some downsides to this. This is my favorite part. Today, the it's average person has an astounding amount of personal information online. And we add to this online information <laughs> every single time we post on Facebook, each time we search on Google, and each time we send an email. Now, many of us probably think, well, one email, there's nothing in there, right? But if you consider a year's worth of emails, or maybe even a lifetime of email, collectively, this tells a lot. It tells where we have been, who we have met, and in many ways, even what we're thinking about. And the more scary part about this is our data now lasts forever. So your data can and will outlive you. What has happened is that we've largely lost control over our data and also our privacy. This is my favorite part. So this year, as the web turns 25, it's very important for us to take a moment and think about the implications of this. We have to really think. We've lost privacy, yes, but this actually what we've also lost right. is the idea of privacy itself. If you think about it, most of us here today probably remember what life was like before the internet. But today, there's a new generation that is being taught from a very young age to share everything online. And this is a generation that is not going to remember when data was private. So if we keep going down this road, 20 years from now, the word privacy is going to have a completely different meaning for what it means to you and I. So it's time for us to take a moment. OK, and think. so if you keep going down this road, the idea of privacy, the definition of the word privacy will no longer have relevance. That's a pretty powerful thing to say. Um, and we're seeing our privacy tested right now this week. This is going to date this video. But uh, anybody who historically or currently is looking at what's happening in the world right now without getting into that rabbit hole, it's really sad, actually. Um, we're starting to see a lot of reasons why privacy matters uh, and the difference between privacy and secrecy. And this could be a video all by itself, but I don't have any problem ta having a privacy conversation in the email conversation because privacy is so fundamental to email. Um, and so, uh, so we're going to talk about that right now. I'm a ProtonMail uh, advocate. We're going to get to that. But I want you to make your own choices. Please don't pick something just because I picked it. In fact, in some cases, it's not pro it's not available to you. If you live in Russia, you can't use ProtonMail uh, without a VPN and some extra tricks. My point I'm trying to make here is that um, is that privacy is a thing, and and people suddenly care about privacy when the powers that be uh, suddenly don't agree with them. Uh, and when everything, you know, it's like it's like it's like there's that old saying: it's good to have a king as long as it's a good king, right? But as soon as the king goes bad people die heads roll and you know it's really good to have a really you know intrusive society uh, uh intrusive government and security agency uh, and by the way i am not bagging on our on even american security uh uh agency i, I and I, and that's not just to cover my ass i swear to god there are fantastic good people and i know a few uh, who work for the NSA and the FBI and places like that. So I, I this is not this is not me railing against you know th what's out there. Uh, I'm just trying to say that that when privacy is good and the times are good, that's fine. But when you oh thanks for the link. But when you move to uh, when things change and we've seen this year in particular in 2020, things have changed radically overnight. When things change that quickly, all of a sudden your privacy matters. Because the person in power 
might not be okay with those emails you sent 15 years ago talking about whatever. Um, uh, so just as I come from watching a Joe Rogan interview, with, uh, did he interview Snowden? I got to watch that one for sure. So, um, so really this is, this is, this, as you're going to find this about me when I do videos, I don't like to just do tech videos. I like to do context videos. That means when you're using technology, technology is just a tool. All of the technology you're picking, all the languages you're learning, they're just tools and they're tools to 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 gain something in our world, to build something, to, you know, to communicate. They are tools. And if we don't think about why we're using the tools rather than just which tools we should use, then we're not really getting to the crux of the issue. Why do you want to use uh, email at all? You know, uh, and, and which email provider would you use? The, the main reason that brought me to this video, though, I want to show you the statistic about Google. Uh, this is straight off of Google's own earnings reports. And this is quite a dated video, so you can only imagine it's gotten a lot worse. I'm, I'm going to try to show you uh, where the money comes from. Because I tell you what, you want to know where somebody's priorities are, follow the money trail. Uh, and I mean that very literally, and I encourage people to follow my money trail, <laughs> my very small money trail. Um, but so I'm trying to find this, the frame. It's really, really good. Uh, it talks about where their money comes from. And I don't see it right now. I'm not gonna have to. Might have to fast forward. Let me take a peek. So, here. In a letter. What you're sending. Is... Okay, so here we go. Just take a moment. Is there anything we can do about this? Oh, okay, here we go. And we'll outlive you. And in many ways, even what we're thinking about. Who famously and doesn't, the more doesn't part use email? Yeah. Is our data now? Many of us probably think, well, one email, the astounding amount of personal information, the others. Have now really transformed our in many ways the ideas that gave i, I can't find it right now I, i'm kind of mad because i wanted to show you but it actually shows the revenue breakdown of google and it's kind of interesting oh this is that's old this is old uh, decentralized stuff oh golly well i have to, i can always clip this part out of the video <laughs> So, but uh, let's go see if I can find it. It's just so cool because it shows you where they get their money from. And here we go. It also shows you why privacy is a thing over here uh, and how they got Snowden, by the way. They got Snowden because they, oh, here we go. Here this we go. This model of the internet today really isn't compatible with privacy. Check this out. Just take a look at some of the biggest names on the web. Google. And you see that advertising plays a huge billion role. Dollars. In fact, this year alone, advertising is $137 billion. And to optimize the ads that are shown to us, companies have to know everything about us. In order to they optimize the ads. Did you see that? Let me just show that one more time. I, when I saw this, this actual statistic, I finally got Google. 91% of Google's total revenue is advertising. 91%. I mean, 91%. That, that company's reason for existing and hiring the smartest people in the world is to advertise to us. That is its only purpose. Anybody who thinks that Google is anything but an advertising company can look at this statistic and know from the beginning that they are, you know, they're, People, you know, what is it? Og Ogilvy and Mather, right? Google is Ogilvy and Mather. They are not a tech company. They are an advertising company. That is what they are. They've always been an advertising company. They're not a search engine company. They're an advertising company and they always have been. So, so look, if that's fine with you and you don't mind being advertised to and having your privacy violated, and there are many people who trade their convenience for that, that's fine. You can tell my position on this already. I'm not, I'm not giving, I'm not, you know, keeping it a secret. But when I, when I have to make a choice about whether giving a company whose entire reason for being 91% of their essence of being is to advertise to me and everybody else. I don't want that company to succeed. I want it to fail. I want it to die. That's me. Uh, I, and I don't use Google at all. And, and I mean, I won't lie. Sometimes I'll, I'll duck, duck, go, I'll have a thing and I'll go over there and I'll get it. But the fact that that company has such a stranglehold on our data and our knowledge and our email is terrifying. 
it's terrifying to me, particularly because they for for was it fifteen bucks Snowden released for like fifteen bucks the they can pay the government can pay Google made an, a product for the governments to use that they can pay uh, like fifteen bucks and without a warrant because you signed off. This is the scariest thing of all. Okay, this is the scariest thing of all. <laughs> so because you agreed to give Google permanent. Uh, rights to your email and everything you do, your your Google, your docs and everything, because you have said that they can have all that data, they don't even have to ask you permission to give it to anyone they want. There's no warrant. There's no nothing. You gave it to them for free. And for 10, I think it's 10 or it's, it's I think it's, it might be 30 bucks, but it was for $30, Google can click on a button and, uh, and, I mean, sorry, any any organization that subscribes to this tool that Google has can click on a button and they can get, I mean, I mean, I'm not getting this right. So if you want the true details, go research it on your own. But I know that for somewhere around $30, all of your data, all of your personal data that's ever existed can be sold and accessed by them and you authorized it. So there's no legal repercussions for that. I think that should be illegal. And, and so does Snowden and so does a bunch of other people. So uh, that is way more time than I thought about picking a good email provider. I promise you, I was not trying to bait and switch. This is not like, hey, pick, here's why you should pick ProtonMail and Google sucks. You know, I'm not trying to, I, I'm, I'm a very tangenty squirrel kind of guy. <laughs> I wasn't planning it, but it is an important topic, dude. So please don't, you know, let it go to the wayside. Um, I'm going to put some chill music on though to like calm my nerves a little bit. Oh boy, as, as I drink some coffee at the same time, right? <laughs> All right, back to picking an email provider. The nice, happy picking an email provider. Uh, a girlfriend's data for 30 bucks. You might be able to do that. I, I'm not kidding. You might actually be able to do that. That would be a great lawsuit. Um, so, anyway. Um, uh, do I have a link for that? Yeah, it's in the Snowden docs. The, the link that I was talking about, the selling the thing, I don't have a direct link, but I need to because I said it on a stream, so I need to provide references to that. Um, if somebody can find it, uh, ooh, a free email provider. <laughs> All right, at the moment I pay to Google for G Suite. Yes. Well, if you're using G Suite, by the way, uh, I used to use G Suite too. And uh, so another reason that you might want to consider this. Okay, so let's talk about email providers for, for a bit. So we talked about Gmail already. Um, it's it's it seems like it's free. It's actually not. Um, and according to Adam Rosen's everything, you give over your entire life for the equivalent of fourteen dollars a year, uh, and that's what they that's what they sell. Um, safety, Google privacy, ads and data. That's a fair that's a fair statement. Um, you said free. <laughs> um, so uh, you know I I'm trying to be accurate in what I say about Google, and I will say this about Google. Google has tried to change its tune. Here's the problem. Every time I hear Google say that they're sorry and they want to make the world a better place, 91% of their money comes from advertising to you. They are financially compelled to maintain that direction. They can say all the nice things they want to. The money trail shows you where their priorities are. Uh, and so, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's supposed to be super secure. I, I like all these different options you guys are posting out there uh, to be a custom domain. Uh, yes. And I want to talk to you about, let's do custom domains. Let's talk about ProtonMail. This is really cool. Uh, and I'm, I'm giving away my bias here. Okay. So, uh, so on, so ProtonMail, what is ProtonMail? Uh, I'm going to, this has been a long video, but oh well. Uh, so let's go to ProtonMail protonmail.com. These are really the only two providers I want to talk about today. The rest of them you can do your own research on. Uh, ProtonMail is the email that was created by uh, Andy Yen, who you just saw on the TED Talk. Uh, it is exploding in popularity as an alternative to Google Gmail. It is free if you want it to be so, or you can pay five bucks a month to get um, what they call a pro account. Uh, it includes a, an open VPN, Proton VPN. Uh, they also have a calendaring tool. And, they, and if you pay with the five bucks, you get two additional things, which are really worth it. You get uh, something called Proton Mail Bridge, which you can run on your own system. And then you can use any email client you want. So if you want to use Thunderbird for Linux, if you want to use Mutt, and it's a full SMTP mail server uh, that's running locally. So you can actually script sending of email 
uh, which they got to watch out because they will throttle you and they'll detect you for spam uh, if you go too too far. So don't think you can use it for spamming. I actually ran into that on accident when I tried to send um, uh, an alert advisory out to 30 people that I was private mentoring and that was too many people. I had to stagger uh, the sending of email. It actually detects the emails too. Um, so I had to stagger them over, over the course of a day to get them all out. Um, so you do have to, so it's not completely automated email sending, but it is. And the really great thing is that everything is encrypted and the keys for all the encryption are never stored anywhere on site, uh, which is how they got Snowden. Uh, so that means you're the only one who has the keys. Um, they do have an email interface. And as I said, you can use any other kind of client. Uh, they're created in Switzerland by the team at CERN who created the World Wide Web in the first place. Uh, and they're fundamentally driven by uh, privacy and security and a better better world. They're they're making money and stuff, but a lot of their, if you look at their money trail, most of their money is coming through private donations and from people like me who pay them. Uh, I told you already, I'm a visionary. That's like the top level you can have, which is you know way more than I would ever pay for email, but it does support them um, because I just believe in their vision of the future uh, where you actually own your data. Um, and there's lots of problems with it. There's a couple of problems you need to know. So the, the first problem you need to know is that uh, services like Netlify uh, won't allow you to have a Netlify account if you have a ProtonMail email. Uh, they've gone so far as to just block it. And the reason for that is because ProtonMail is so secure uh, and is getting to be mainstream, it's still being used by hackers a lot. Um, so hackers will, will, will use it and they'll, there's no way to trace them. Uh, and so they'll use it and then they'll, they'll create free accounts and then they'll attack and then they'll they'll let go. So Netlify, the engineers at Netlify and Twitter have written why they don't, they just don't allow it anymore. Um, I have noticed a way to get around that, uh, which is to have a custom email. So if you use a custom email through ProtonMail, which I have, uh, it won't block you because it doesn't know it's coming from ProtonMail. And so let's talk about custom, uh, custom mails, uh, domains and all that sort of thing. Uh, this is a different talk, but um, so watch for another video about this, but you can go to Namecheap, which I, again, have no affiliation with other than I'm a customer. Uh, you can go to Namecheap.com and you can, again, no affiliation, but you can go to there, you can get a pretty cheap uh, email address. And if you buy the email address through them, you can actually use a custom email address on ProtonMail and they give you, I think like five, I think, I can't remember, um, actual email addresses on that domain. It's not like this unlimited huge thing like you might get someplace else. Uh, just to compare, the last time I looked at the prices for that on G Suite, which is what I used to use for my skillstack.io domain uh, for email, were, were it was like 30 bucks a month. Uh, to have a custom domain through uh, a, a custom email through there. Uh, the process for signing up for a custom domain through ProtonMail is really painless. It's got a step-by-step -step thing. You just fill them out and you just have to update your records um, on either wherever you do your, your, your domain name hosting, which is a separate video. Uh, I don't use Namecheap for my domain name hosting. I just buy them from there and then I, I host everything on either DigitalOcean or Netlify depending on where I want to park my, my domain's uh, name server entries. That's, that's outside of the scope of this if you want to know more about that that's fine don't feel bad if you don't understand what i just said but those of you who are making a selection criteria for an email might want to might want customizability and we didn't put that in here that cut that, that lands in the custom customization uh, and then um i'm going to put up here i'm going to put domain names uh domains uh so that means allowing you to have your your own oops that's right let me go ahead and do you want to yes oh boy Yes, quit me out. <laughs> I forgot I'm editing the same file that, that I had over here. All right. So customization domains and stuff like that. Um, so let's do, go ahead. This is going to watch this one bark at me now. <laughs> All right. So uh, so there you go. That's that's kind of a, a thing. A G Suite is five bucks a month, five pounds a month. How much is that in US? I, I'm, I can't convert really fast. I'm dumb American. Hmm. 50 bucks a month. That's good news. That's good news. It has come down that far. Um, a lot of people like G Suite. Um, the thing I'm, I'm really fascinated with about G Suite, can someone tell me, this is, this is just a professional curiosity. Uh, do you have any promises or assurances that they're not going to use your communication through G Suite for other privacy uh, violating situations? I mean, I, I don't trust them. Even if they said they did, I would never trust them with my business information. There's just no way I would ever do it. Uh, but, but I'm just curious. Uh, if that, if anybody else has, uh, because this is slated to corporate users, right? I figured because, because if, if they're trying to sell to a corporate user, they have, they have like legal requirements to have privacy. There is a privacy agreement. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's <laughs> 90%. So, I mean, 
you know, whatever. I, I, I'm not going to say that, by the way, Google's doing amazing things with educators as well. Uh, you know, I, it's kind of scary that everybody has access to all of the student data that's going into that system, but they've, you know, they've marketed really well to that. Um, they have a really phenomenally great, uh, um, Google sheets, uh, JavaScript API. I love that thing. Uh, but it's not worth having them, them having control and access to all my spreadsheets. Uh, we actually had somebody report, uh, that they added a document about something really, um, really, uh, obscure, uh, they, as an experiment. And it was confirmed by more than one person. They added something really obscure to their Google documents and they started seeing ads about that specific thing. And then somebody else had the same thing. Um, so yep, yeah, they removed, don't be evil. Uh, that I, they try to justify that. I don't. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm trying to give him benefit of the doubt, but in many ways, I would I would never trust Google ever. Uh, 91% of their income, $55 billion comes through that those coffers it's specifically to advertise to you. Uh, that's enough money to overwhelm any organization's ethics. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, so I, I don't know, you know. Um, meanwhile, you know, ProtonMail uh, is, 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 much more trustworthy uh so far as to in my experience uh let's see from there gc sweat google processors your data to fulfill all contractual obligations uh to deliver our service google customers own their data not google uh the data that companies schools and students put into our servers is theirs uh, google does not sell your data to third parties that i i i mean that's directly controverted by I, now you're making me gonna have to go look for it uh, Google offers our products a, a detailed data processing amendment that describes our commitment to protecting your data. Um, it's even more now. They even disclose their YouTube financials this year for the first time. Well, that's great. Maybe this pressure will help Google do some of the, some things more that are correct. One of the things they're going to have to do, though, is stop making money off advertising. Uh, and I won't feel comfortable until they stop that. Um, and, and I... I'm going to go look for the source on the fact that they can sell all your data for 30 bucks a year to the government because now I really want to find that resource. Uh, again, I don't want you to be taking that for me. It might be just, I may be remembering it wrong uh, or anything like that. Uh, but there are many things in the, in the, I, I do remember that them saying that you have the, your data and that they don't sell it to you. Uh, $45 for a subpoena and $60 for a wiretap. That's the one that I was looking for. Thank you for finding that. Thank you for finding that uh, for a search warrant. Okay, uh, so yeah, how to search, how a search warrant for data Google wants you to pay. Uh, Tech China has been changing US law enforcement. Yep, so this is the service that they've been selling. That's much more details than I could ever tell you. That's actually a relatively recent article. Thank you very much for showing that to us. Um, what does all this have to do with you picking an email provider? Well, it has a lot because you have to, your email is you and you have to kind of decide uh, what you want people to know about you and, and who you're giving that, who you're giving that, that I think the trust conversation is the most important conversation related to an email provider. Uh, and so there you go. Um, uh, maybe they'll start being, <laughs> they're just, they're so, they're so rich now. They don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Right. Don't, don't make the Google gods mad at you. Uh, and certainly don't put certain keywords in your YouTube videos or they'll be automatically taken down. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I even have doubts about snail mail these days. I know. Wait, uh, that could charge money to comply with the subpoena. How can... Uh, I, I don't know, man. It's so crazy. If you're outside the U.S., if the government thinks that you're a bad person, they'll give the data. Same with Microsoft. Do you think the ad business model is why Google Cloud Platform isn't more popular? I don't know. Uh, like Azure is beating the market. They really. I think Azure just has got Microsoft, and Microsoft is in the enterprise more, personally. All right, so we're kind of getting off of the email pick. Uh, China's cracking down on Reddit too. Yeah, yeah. Proton mail. Um, uh, I'm signing up for Proton. So let me tell you a couple things so that full disclosure. Uh, if you sign up for Proton mail, uh, there's a chance that your country will block it. Uh, you can't. We know for a fact that you cannot use Proton mail uh, from Russia unless you do some complicated VPN stuff and you're a really wicked hacker. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, in skills, not like ethics. Um, uh, so that is a thing. Uh, I don't know about Wicker. I, I thought about thinking about that too. Uh, you can, yeah, you can do a whole stream on GPG, uh, which I love. I love GPG. I wrote a, uh, uh, several libraries that, that encapsulate the GPG, uh, uh, Go, by the way, has, has native open PGB, uh, open GPG, uh, PGP support, which is really great. Anyway, I'm getting down the tech holes here. Um, 
Tutanoa is another one of these sort of like Proton Mail. Uh, it's run in Germany. Uh, I, I started out pl playing around with it and I, I cannot trust it um, for reasons I won't get into. Uh, it really, really caters to hackers. Um, and and so and it, it's it's not as uh, protected by safeguards that the company of Proton Mail does with being in Switzerland. Um, Etc. Uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft email is a thing. Uh, I don't think it's, anybody has to talk about Microsoft's issues. Uh, Microsoft is the same Microsoft since before, but you know, it's in that regard uh, in terms of your privacy. Uh, they want to own you. Uh, I don't think they. I don't know what the privacy agreement is on Microsoft, um, so I can't speak to that. Um, uh, a lot of people do use that. Hotmail Live and Outlook are all Microsoft. These are a lot of people like these services, and I have nothing bad to say about them other than uh, I would prefer to use uh, to promote a company that I know has publicly made their primary concern security. Uh, but it, but this these Microsoft uh, accounts come you know pretty conveniently for people and corporate Outlook I, Outlook 360. I saw a 360 the other day and I was like, man, this is awesome. If I were if I were a company that was already Microsoft shop. I would have no problem using Outlook. Um, and frankly, I didn't mind Outlook as a web client back in the day. I really liked it. I thought it was pretty good. People complain about it all the time, but but relative to other things, it wasn't that bad. You certainly couldn't use it from your terminal. Uh, Yahoo.com, you just shouldn't be using that today, in my opinion. Uh, it's still out there. AOL is just kind of a joke. It's still there. Um, uh, host your own. Uh, so if you want to host your own uh, email, you can. Uh, it's totally doable. Uh, it's not even that hard. Um, to do the chant, the hard part about hosting your own is that you will uh, are likely to get blacklisted um, because you're not one of the big people. And a lot of people who do host their own email are doing it for their nefarious means and purposes. And by the way, if you do host your own and you don't use one of these extra protocols that's out there, DNS protocols to validate that you're legit, uh, you'll almost instantly be blacklisted. And that means your whole domain will get blacklisted. And when that happens, that's it's almost impossible to come back from that. You have to actually, because the, the blacklisting happens automatically a lot of times. I know this from having done work, managed this stuff. So in order to get removed from the blacklisting, you have to, you, you have to go to you have to like petition them and get their attention because once you get picked up automatically you know it's it's just sucks it's it's really because you know you have a domain and it'll get blacklisted and it's pretty much dead at that point so uh, i recommend that if you are going to try to do your own uh, domain name that you go with a gmail or a proton mail and you do all the extra steps that they say for like dmark and a bunch of extra things so that you can do as much as possible to authenticate your domain as being legit and being owned by you and stuff like that because there's been a lot of progress since you know the 90s for to now about authenticating email uh, uh, authenticity and nothing as good as gpg could ever provide but and there's still no secure email connections uh, they, i mean that that's really in mainstream but there is a lot of things that prove that you're an actual good domain and stuff like that and that's almost always managed through dns these days so um, even though I'm not professionally administering SendMail these days, um, uh, that's another thing. Uh, everything is, is behind paid user wall. Uh, ProtonMail gives you a couple of things for free, uh, but they operate on the premise that if you like something, you should pay for it. So, and frankly, I think more of us should be willing to pay for services that we need um, rather than give over everything about us from what we think is free. Uh, that's what's gotten us into this mess is this obsession with free. Um, you don't get anything for free. I mean, just be real. I mean, you don't. And I, I'm streaming. I'm not streaming for free. I'm streaming because this is stuff I need to be able to provide and organize things so I can make my meager living even doing private mentoring. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons for doing this. Um, so shut the front door. Why should we pay for something that's beneficial to us? <laughs> I have a free process mail. It's okay. Migrating from Google can be a pain. Actually, if you're going to migrate from Google, which I don't suggest you definitely do, um, I actually, I set up a, so this is a real important story and I'll end with this because I've gone for over an hour. Um, if you, if you go, you make a new email, right? Um, and we talked about two to know. I'll talk about that again in a second. Uh, but I, um, I went to Gmail and if you do, you can set it up so that it auto, auto forwards your email to ProtonMail and I have that working. And I set up um, uh, 
you know, I had Gmail authentication for several password accounts and stuff like that. And um, I am really, really happy that I said delete after forward uh, and risk losing a few emails here and there, maybe. Uh, and the reason for that was because we didn't talk about fast mail. We should. The reason for that was because um, if somebody tries to attack your account, and they know you have an access, you have an account some ways, and they try to do you know, password recovery, that email will still come to you. It'll come to your Proton Mail after it bounces through Gmail. But if they, but if they, uh, yeah, Google OAuth, I, yeah, but if they. But if for some reason the email still stays on Gmail and your Gmail gets compromised, whatever email goes through Gmail still has to, goes to you. So and I had a specific case where somebody was attacking me and they were trying to do a password recovery and they didn't get to see the password recovery because it got forwarded to ProtonMail so fast and it didn't land inside of the compromised Gmail account that I was actually able to lock them out of the Gmail account that they had hacked and 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 do some other things. Uh, by the way, uh, the way that I was hacked was because I I changed my phone number, uh, and I forgot to change my recovery phone uh, number on a couple of very important services, and so somebody got my phone number uh, like six months after I ever used that phone number, and they just started going to town. And it was, it was terrifying. And, and ever since then, uh, I never ever use two factor authentication with the phone anymore. Uh, it, yeah, I was definitely targeted and, but don't use, I was, it was, it turned out to just be some guy who randomly, you know, they, Hey, I wonder, I wonder who's on this, on the other end of this phone number. I wonder if they have an account over here, if they have an account over here, if they have an account over here. Um, so it was basically getting swim swapped, swim swapped only I did it myself. So just let me warn everybody out there. If you use two factor authentication with a phone, make absolutely sure one of two things it stays true. One, you never give up the phone number ever. If you give up that phone number, thank God you don't have to now, uh, the next person who gets your phone number will find something out there eventually uh, because they'll be notified. So let's say you forget a password, you go get a notification. You just gave whoever has your phone uh, a, a clue right away as to an account that they can hack. And unless, and then when you don't see the thing come through and you're like, well, what's going on? If the other person's fast enough, they can recover for you and they can take over your account. So people say use two factor authentication all the time and two step verification. And I'm like, hell to the no. I would never use two step verification ever again unless it has TOTP built in, which is something we'll talk about in another thing using KeePass XC or whatever. Uh, because that's different. You know, when you have an algorithm that's running that only you know, that's one thing. It's another thing when somebody can recover. Uh, by guessing some random thing or even just sending it to your phone and you don't have that phone anymore. So I absolutely do not use my phone for any kind of password recovery. And and I just, I really cannot emphasize that enough um, because if somebody gets a hold of your phone in any way, uh, they'll take over you. And they have done that to many people. YouTubers have had that happen to them, sim swapping a lot. We've had, we've had YouTuber, I've, I've read about or watched um, about YouTubers who had, their YouTube accounts taken over because they social engineered uh, the phone company um, that provides uh, their accounts and they took it over. They took over their whole YouTube video and uh, account. So, so just be really careful out there. I don't want, um, uh, yeah, and I have TOTP set. So I have TOTP set with no phone verification. verification. And then I also have a, like a 300 character password with multiple different characters in it using KeePass XC. And I find that to be much more secure. Um, uh, it's not something that everybody can do, I understand. Um, but, and that's kind of the downside of security, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, Twitch forces you to use two-step and they force you to use their stupid thing and I hate it. I hate it. You can't even use, it's actually an extra thing that you have to use TOTP. To, you can't use the standard TOTP algorithms in Twitch. You have to use their stupid tool. It's the only account that I have that requires me to download their stupid tool. And it just drives me crazy. Uh, uh, but also be cautious about using a phone over TOTP. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, you don't use Authy? Please, in Discord, will you talk to me about that? I want to get rid of Authy so bad it's making me crazy. I use KeePassXE for everything else and I can't use Authy. 
Get you someone and get an SMS too. Yeah. So if I can get back, if I can get off of Authy, I would be so happy. <laughs> All right. I think we've exceeded our time and on this topic. Uh, I'm picking your email provider. I've gone about 40 minutes or so. Um, it's fun. You guys uh, have a, have a fun time talking about all this. Uh, <laughs> and, um, there's lots of email providers out there. There's really only a few that are really serious contenders. Um, uh, and that doesn't even include two to know. It's worth me talking about them. No, um, uh, two to know is, is German and, um, doesn't store, they can pass the keys and, uh, the, the, the keys in the same way the ProtonMail does, which I find more secure. That's why I've, I've gone with ProtonMail over two to know, which I had for a good month and a half. Um, so any, anyway, a TOTV provider is the next debate. Yes. Uh, we probably should do a video on KeePass XC as well. Uh, I, a lot of people like Bitwarden. I am not a fan. Uh, I have my KeePass XC and my YubiKey for everything. And oh my God, it's so easy. It's so easy. I, <laughs> it's just so easy The and the YubiKeys they have now, you can actually carry around the, the password file with you on the YubiKey which is kind of against the point in the first place. But anyway, um, all conversations for another time, people. Uh, so uh, did I recommend a web browser? Uh, I did. And we had a whole video about web browsers, which will show up on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I recommend links. And I'm using Firefox now after all the brave fiasco that just happened. All right. Um, so we'll talk to you guys again soon. I'm actually going to drop um, or actually go take a break right now and then come back. Uh, but this has been a, a quick video, mostly about providing, uh, picking an email provider, but uh, I would say at least half of it was about the security and privacy concerns of your email provider, which I'm going to say is probably worth watching anyway. So yeah, time for the, the fish. Um, and I'll let you guys chill out and talk about stuff. Uh, when I come back, I will, for a few hours, I'll be in over the shoulder mode. So just so you know. Uh, Twitch, uh, mark end of email. <laughs> I'm going to mark the end of that Twitch thing. And there you go. And then I'm going to, I'll bring the fish back. I should probably give you guys an AFK though. What should I tell you? What should, what should my AFK be? Figlet. Uh, how about two, I don't know, 235. Back at <laughs> 235. Uh, or so, <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut this one. All right. Uh, what time zone? Time zone's up here. Are you talking about me? Right here. EDT minus four. It's, that's Eastern time. Yep. Um, and the session. I'll just keep going as we go. Uh, the next session that I do is 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 just gonna be me coding, um, and writing, and so. I might pull a video out of that as well, but mostly it's just going to be more me working over the shoulder. So I'm actually going to change my status. 